What's up everybody and welcome back. In this week's video, I wanna show you what I did for the background and also for the substrate. I'm not going with any typical substrate that you normally do. Normally people do sand or gravel. I'm doing ceramic tile. I figured I'd be different. And another reason why I'm going tile is this tank sits at six foot one inch tall. Very tall, just as tall as me actually. Could you imagine me trying to lift wet sand after I rinse it out? and pouring it into this tank. I mean, I would literally need about five to 600 pounds of sand to get full coverage in this massive tank. I'm not doing that, my back's not doing that. So I'm gonna go with tile because it's gonna save my back, it's less hassle, and it's also gonna help me keep the water clean. The maintenance on this is gonna be super low for a big tank, that's exactly what I'm going for. But with doing all this, I really wanna teach you guys how to do this on your own. You can do this on any size tank. I just so happen to be doing a much larger tank so you guys can get a good visual how to do this. But whether you have a 10 gallon tank or a thousand gallon tank, you can do this. So pay attention, I'm gonna show you step by step. got about half the tile and as you can see here we'll zoom in so you guys can get a good look at what we're doing but what do you think about that rinse these ceramic tiles thoroughly if you're going to do this I wipe them all down with warm water and then pat dry them down with a towel and then I hand them to Lucas and he puts them in for me it's always nice having a little guy to be able to hop up in there when need be say hi hi the size of the ceramic tiles that I used on this project were 12 by 12 Careful. Depending on how big your tank is, you can get different sizes. Just check with your local hardware store. So I'm going to show you what I use to paint my backgrounds. I've got a high density foam roller, 6 inch, with a little roller that it's going to clip onto here. I picked this up at Walmart. I got this little paint pan as well. And this is the paint that I use. Pop off one of the rollers here. There we go. So now we're going to paint the background black. I got a little bit already done as you can see here. And you put this on lightly. We're going to do probably three or four coats. So you can still see through it. You want to do light coats just like this. And you want to allow it to dry for about 20 minutes. So three or four coats is what we'll need. You just got to check the coverage and see if you can see through it. We're going to make this completely blacked out. coat on like I said keep it thin nothing too crazy like I said we're gonna do about three or four coats of this but let me get the rest of the coats on here and we'll come back and see the final product Luke is putting in some work on it too he's doing a good job this is our third coat so we're getting there all right so we got the background painted look at that no lights coming through looking really good all the way to the end there look at that there we go. We got the background accomplished with just a little bit of acrylic paint. Took me three coats actually, so a little less. We got the tile in, and I've had to make some cut on the sides here. I've had to trim these panels down a little bit. But it's all fitting really good. But now we got to do these little trim pieces around the overflow box. These are going to be a little trickier, but hopefully with my cutter we can get that pretty good. So the tool that I'm using to cut my tile is a 14 inch tile cutter. The name brand's Anvil and I got it from Home Depot. But this tile cutter is going to make all my detailed cuts around these tricky spots around the overflow box and the sides of the tank. Pretty simple, pretty self explanatory. Let me move it up here. See the scoring wall here? That's going to make a mark in your tile. So you want to line the tile up. See, I've already cut this piece in half. We're going to cut it in half again. This is how I made all my detailed cuts with everything but you find your line and you line your wheel up with the line here right and then you put it right on the tile and listen it's going to make it's going to score it's going to make a mark on top of the tile create a weak point see that and then this little stopper you lift this handle up and the stopper drops down hold your tile here and lightly push down until it pops open and look at that guys perfect cut every single time so 
If you guys were wondering how I did all my little detail cuts around the overflow box, this tool here did it all. And it was only 22 bucks, super easy. And it stores just like that. All right guys, so we got everything cut. All these little small pieces. See that? Turned out pretty good though, didn't it? With that black background, I think it's really gonna pop with the fish. What do you guys think? All right guys, now we're gonna to get to the fun part, the silicone. We're gonna silicone the bottom of this tank. I'm gonna take you through how I do it. The supplies that you're gonna to need to complete this task is a caulking gun, uh, latex gloves, which we can smooth up the silicone with, isopropyl alcohol, which will help remove any silicone that we get on anything else, a mask to keep the fumes out, and then plenty of rags. You want to cut the tip of the silicone at a 45 degree angle to lay it down accurately. The biggest advice I can give you is take your time and go slow. Remember how I told you to cut the tube at a 45 degree angle? Well here's the reason why. Look how flat that's laying and look how smooth that's coming out. I have to hardly do anything other than squeeze the trigger on the caulking gun. But this is allowing me to lay this down without any mess and without getting the silicone all over the tank. As you can see in up close view here. It is laying down nice, neat, and even. And like I said, just take your time and it'll turn out really good. Now this is where the isopropyl alcohol comes into play with the rags. I had accidentally got some silicone on the acrylic where I did not want it. And as you can tell with the alcohol, it has taken it right off no problems. So not only am I siliconing it to the sides of the acrylic, I'm also going to silicone in between the tiles as well. Almost like grout when you lay a floor. This will ensure that no debris or detritus can get underneath these tiles and have a chance to foul the water up. And this is where the glove comes into play. I'm going to push this into the tile itself in the gaps and smooth it out. That way there it cannot be visible when we put water into this. Okay guys, well we got the silicone done, so let's take a closer look at it and I'm going to show you just how good it turned out. Look at that, we got the edges all done, the back, and then all the tile in between. And you really got to look hard to be able to see the silicone on the tile as well. But it turned out super nice. Alright guys, well I hope I taught you something new today and I hope you guys enjoyed the build. I enjoyed doing it for you guys. Lucas got to help me as well, my right hand man. Without him I wouldn't be able to do this much. He's helped me out tremendously. But I'm also sorry about not doing a video here within probably what, at least two weeks. I know, sorry. Uh, we've both been battling the flu and I've had some other health concerns that I've been battling with as well. But a uh, good thing is, is we're all good, we're all healthy, we're all safe, and you guys will be expecting more videos here soon. This tank's getting almost running. Next video, we will have the plumbing part and then also putting my media into the sump as well. I'm showing you guys what I'm gonna be running. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.